Well, we did a study using uh, a metabolite of tamoxifen, which uh, the preclinical studies and some of the clinical studies have suggested is a very important metabolite, and that's a metabolite called endoxifen. Uh, so several years ago, <clears throat> in collaboration with the National Cancer Institute, we, uh, uh, the endoxifen was synthesized, preclinical pharmacology and toxicology studies were performed, and uh, ultimately we uh, put this drug into humans as first in human studies back in 2010. Um, this is a, a, a study that was, uh, uh, we treated women with breast cancer that was estrogen positive, and these women generally had failed standard therapies. And there was a couple things that were found. Overall, we found that the drug was uh, well tolerated. One of our goals was to actually uh, be able to uh, achieve uh, concentrations of endoxifen that would not be able to be achieved in patients who received the drug tamoxifen. And uh, we were uh, very successful with that. In fact, uh, the concentrations that were achieved, even at some of the lower doses, were 20, 30, and sometimes 40-fold higher than what one was able to achieve with the drug tamoxifen. So from, from that standpoint, we were very successful. Uh, very important, however, and uh, encouraging was the fact that we, we saw some very uh, encouraging clinical activity. That is, these women who had failed standard hormonal therapies, uh, there was a, a number of patients that had partial response. There were patients that had prolonged stable disease. That is, their cancer was under good control for over a year. Uh, so overall, we're very encouraged uh, and looking forward to the next steps. Right now, we're actually doing an expansion study where we're uh, looking at uh, a lower dose of endoxifen versus a higher dose. So one of the questions that comes up is, what's the best dose of endoxifen to take forward? And uh, so we're hoping to begin to get some information as to that. The next steps after that will be ultimately to study um, uh, endoxifen further in women who have metastatic breast cancer and who have failed some st standard therapies. To further study the uh, effects of the drug as it relates to clinical activity as well as uh, uh, toxicity. Eventually what we'd like to do is to take this drug forward uh, in women who are premenopausal. In women who are premenopausal, the only drug that's FDA approved for the treatment of ER positive breast cancer is the drug tamoxifen. And so uh, we think that based on our preclinical studies that endoxifen is a better drug uh, than tamoxifen. Uh, and, and also based on the importance of a number of studies that show, have shown that that metabolite is critical for the activity of tamoxifen. So the, the eventual goal would be to actually study this drug early on in women who have early stage breast cancer and make a direct comparison with the drug tamoxifen, which is a standard of care. If you compare directly tamoxifen with endoxifen, the, uh, the drug uh, or the metabolite endoxifen and now the drug is about 100-fold more potent in terms of its ability to inhibit the estrogen receptor. So just in terms of its ability uh, to shut down the effects of estrogen, which is very important in women with estrogen-positive breast cancer, it's a better drug uh, uh, preclinically. Uh, obviously, what we'd like to be able to do ultimately is make a direct comparison with tamoxifen uh, uh, because we know that there are uh, a group of patients actually that ha actually have very low levels of endoxifen. And these are women that have um, <clears throat> uh, issues with metabolism. So they have reductions in CYP2D6 metabolism or other enzymes that lead to low levels of endoxifen. So ideally, we'd like to be able to uh, 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 prospectively test in that population, and perhaps, and perhaps endoxifen could be a better drug uh, specifically in those patients.